of one. Irreducible complexity is the problem that Darwin himself faced um, frequently with um, respect to the eye. Um, and um, it, it, it amounts to say this object, that this biological object that I'm looking at, is so complicated that I, whoever I am, John Smith, am unable to understand how it might have come about by, um, in this case, evolution by natural selection, or whatever your particular scientific theory is. That's an incredibly weak kind of argument, because it's what I call the argument from personal incredulity. It's just saying, I can't imagine that it Therefore, something supernatural had to, had to be responsible. That is a lazy argument, uh, what you should say is, okay, this is something that's difficult to understand, let's roll up our sleeves, go to work, and find out what, what's really going on. But you did, you did say that the, the um, I say that question, if this evidence, which you say could be a trick, if it was shown using those methods, hypothetically, if you could show something, what might that be? If not the reducible complexity, I mean, then surely there must be something using that scientific method which you could show. I, mean, I, I was under the impression that that is what you were going to give an example of tonight, some sort of evidence which we could find that would suggest it on. If not the reducible complexity, then what sounds like it? Okay, it certainly wouldn't be so called irreducible complexity. That's a, that's a very deep idea. We were trying to come up with, with, with better arguments. Um, and I think the conclusion we kind of reached was that no matter how difficult it is to explain it on your existing um, understanding of science, it's even more difficult, even more improbable that it should have been done by some, something supernatural, even if you even know what, what you mean by something uh, supernatural. So, um, uh, I mean, if, if, if even a 900 foot Jesus bellowing across the mountain top doesn't convince me, obviously I'm not going to be convinced the so called irreducible complexity, which has just been tried over and over again when anybody looks at it carefully enough, um, they find an explanation of it. Even if they don't, they don't refuse, they don't resort to the lazy compound. By the way, the Catholics among you will know the concept of, in, of um, invincible ignorance. This is what happens when nothing will ever persuade people of the truth of uh, the Catholic version of the Christian story. And since there is no salvation outside the church, the one hope you want is that you were so obvious, so incapable, even of accepting a 900 foot Jesus over the mountain, that you would be saved. This sounds like the only thing. <laughs> there are other hands here. Somebody from the next room, perhaps? Um, if, sorry. Uh, if, if there are no conditions which could occur to convince you of the existence of God, <coughs> doesn't Blue's falsification principle render your position cognitively meaningless? <laughs> <laughs> But what, what we've been breaking to say is that uh, um, there, is a, there is some kind of, of uh, odd symmetry between the position taken by those theists who think that nothing will ever counts as, as uh, counter evidence to their view, and the um, question posed to the non believer um, what would change your mind and make you a believer? What kind of evidence or experience would do it? And I think what, what, what Mr. I've been trying to say is that you have a long distance to travel before you even got to the point of making intelligible that question. Because if for any example that you, that you care to offer us of something that could be the work of changing our mind, we would have to exhaust a number of other possibilities first. A visit to the psychiatrist, a visit to the, to the magician, um, MRI scan of the brain, uh, uh, waiting until all the illegal substances have cleared their way out, and uh, not going to the pub too often, and down and along 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 the route, superhuman area. <coughs> yes, and, and then you would still be, be faced with the possibility that it was something like that, superhuman area, rather than supernatural being, or that we've been wrong about the laws of physics, or that the universe is a ratio set, or the hundred set of ratio, or the way around, that the world contains more things. Uh, in heaven and earth, more natural things in heaven and earth than, than we have ever talked about. So th th there will be a long, long road to, to travel before we've exhausted all the possibilities. 
And if the final resource, the ultimate resource, was to say, well, then there has to be prayer, what would we have arrived at? Anything other than a, a vacuous gesture of the hand at something which, for traditional and historical reasons, people used to think was expected. Why do you pick that religion? Why that one? And it appears to me it's the equivalent of going up to somebody who's married and saying, well, why do you pick that one? That's not the prejudice, that's not the most rational. Why do you pick that one? And so, in answer to the question there, you say that the only thing that would ever convince you of um, being religious or maybe believing in the supernatural power is an emotional response. Maybe instead of, and it could work the other way, of course, we could try and convert the religious, not through logic, but through seduction. <laughs> well, yes. and it does happen that the story God makes more than when pregnant, she gives birth to an egregious figure who, among other things, goes to the other world, comes out again and joins his father. Um, it's an old tale. I mean, Zeus was doing it all the time in more than everything. They were giving birth to Hercules and Castor Pollux and so on. So it is an old story. And they were quite right to ask the question why that one? And why not our Asperger? There's a slightly better explanation um, in the case of spouses, and that's because um, you know, there might have been something about pheromones, or um, there, there might have been that identifiable biological reason why you chose that. There are very few identifiable biological reasons for being a Hindu or a Christian, other than the fact that you're Say again? No, really? Thank you to both of them for being here and talking to us. It has been amazing. Thank you.